Library District Board of Trustees to order. It is 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday, April 19, 2017. Diane, please take a roll. Uh, Linda. Karen. Here. Barbara. Here. Rob. Here. Tim. Here. Carolyn. Here. Patty. Here. Okay, before we continue with the rest of the board meeting, uh, Susan and I would like to take a few minutes to honor our retiring trustee, Barbara Nakanishi. Barb, can you please come forward with us so we can honor you the way you should be honored. Let Susan Reed. A proclamation for you. Resolution of the Niles Public Library District in recognition and appreciation of service by Barbara Nakanishi. Whereas Barbara Nakanishi has shown extraordinary support and vision in her position as trustee and Whereas Barbara Nakanishi has led the library in planning and executing a full building renovation as board president. And whereas Barbara Nakanishi has advocated for the library's excellence leading to its first four star rating. And whereas Barbara Nakanishi has advocated strongly for the library staff leading to the uh, adoption of IMRF in 2016. And whereas Barbara Nakanishi has used her strong voice publicly to advocate for the patrons of the library. And whereas Barbara Nakanishi has served multiple terms as a board member and officer, therefore, let it be resolved that the Niles Public Library District thanks and commends Barbara Nakanishi for her 13 years of service. So stated this 19th day of April 2017. It's wonderful. So thank you. Yes. Thanks, Sasha. Thanks, Susan. Thank no, I can stay after <laughs> making that. I know. I know. It's wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's been awesome. a real honor to serve the, the residents of the village of Niles and uh, to be an advocate uh, for the staff here. And it's been a lot of fun and uh, mostly not scary. Um, uh, but um, it's time for me to move on. And I. Uh, wish a good luck to uh, the trustees who will be uh, coming on board next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. Um, so now, if we can go to a short reset, Oh, we can do the Pledge of Allegiance? <gasps> <laughs> Sorry. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oops. Sorry about that, everyone. Human error, human error. <laughs> um, so we can go into a short recess and um, all in favor say aye so that we can have cupcakes and do a celebration aye. for Barb. Aye. aye. And 10 p.m. Uh, Diane, please take a roll. Linda? Here. Karen? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Rob? Yes. Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, I don't want to take anything away from Barb. I just want to say, Rob, thank you so much. Because you, even though it's only been eight months, I really appreciate all your insight, everything you have brought to this table. I feel we're a better board because of you. So thank you. Congratulations on his new <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And that's most important. <laughs> um, okay, so next on our agenda. 
Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda, which includes minutes of the regular board meeting on March 15, 2017, the payment of the bill's property and expenses of $252,705.24, payroll expenses of $263,695.31, and special reserve expenses of $0 for a total monthly expense of $516,000. $416,400.55 into approved payment to physiographic in the amount of $5,891.36 for the publication of the Spring Chapter 1 newsletter. So moved. Second. Third. And Okay, does anyone want any of these items removed from the consent agenda? If I don't want to vote for the physiographic $5,800, I would vote no for that. So if you don't separate it, then I would just vote no for the entire consent agenda. Yeah, we can separate it up. Yeah, we can separate it up. Okay. Because that's really the only item that I'm still have a discrepancy with. Okay, so then uh, we could just remove, um, with Barb and Patty, if we can just remove the um, payment to physiographic, the amount of $5,891.36 with publication of the Spring Chapter 1 newsletter, if that's okay. It's fine. All right. Okay. okay, we'll do that. We'll do that next. All right, so um, any discussion? Thank you. No, oh, no, okay. Then, Diane, please take it off. Okay, we don't. Oh, I'm sorry, Barbara. Yes. Uh, Rob? Yes. Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Just to clarify, A and B of the consent yes. agenda? Yes, thank you. Yes. Patty? Thank yes. you. Linda? Yes. Kara? Yes. Okay, so then do I hear a motion to approve uh, no, letters four, or number 4C to approve the payment to Visiographic in the amount of $5,891.36 for the publication of the Spring Chapter 1 newsletter? Mm -hmm. So we'll move. Oh, okay. second. Barb Caddy? And then discussion? Okay, uh, we could just take a roll. Barbara? Yes. Rob? Yes. Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, I'm voting no again because we haven't um, taken the time to reevaluate this item and come up with some lower costs. Okay. Committee? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. Yes. Report, please. Uh, yeah, and I do want to take this opportunity to say that um, I will be doing the treasurer's report from here forward uh, as, a, as a treasurer of the board. I really should have been doing it. Uh, I let Greg do it when I first started because I was very unsure about what I was doing, but as the months progressed, I've become a little bit more comfortable and I uh, should have taken it a while ago. But uh, from here on in, I will be doing this. Uh, any questions, you can direct them towards me. If I have the answers, I will answer. If I don't, I will now note it and I will get back to you. So current treasurer's report, uh, revenue was over budget uh, expectations by uh, 2,172 for the month and exceed expectations by 266, 868 for the year. I do want to note that revenue is uh, a little hard to fully estimate. Uh, this was due primarily to real estate tax collection rates and as we do our budgets, uh, you know, we give an estimate of what the revenue is going to be, but uh, obviously we can't be that exact. Uh, salaries uh, for the month are 91 under budget and uh, 64,000 under budget for the year at this point. Library materials uh, for the month is 14,474 under budget, uh, 23,000, uh, I'm sorry, 23 percent for the month, uh, and 17,875 <coughs> over budget for the year. Uh, this is due to annual subscription fees and we have to realize that some of these li online items like library materials there is not an exact monthly amount so that uh, at certain points it can be over budget and 
there are certain points that will be under budget, but uh, generally uh, we are looking towards having it uh, be on or under budget for the year. Library operating expenses. Uh, expenses are 1335 under budget, uh, or 4.2 for the month, and 36542 under budget for the year. Uh, this was due to slow spending in the per capita, softing and printing items. General administrative, the general administrative expenses is 6,121 over budget estimates for the month, uh, or 25.5%, and 29,846 under budget uh, for the year to date. This is due to slower spending for consultant promotional legal items. So that's pretty good. Uh, fringe benefits is uh, 1947376 over budget. But, you know, let's be clear, that was due primarily to the payment of the $2 million for the IMRF that we obviously couldn't have budget for because we didn't uh, have it planned in the budget. It was a special one-time payment. The amount uh, paid to IMRF uh, for March was about 30170 Library portion of this IMRF payment was $19,000. $20. Utilities is within 2,500 budget expenses and 13,000 to year to date. And the net surplus is uh, 2,232,728, which is 20,000 favorable to the budget net surplus, and 2,212,569 uh, 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 net surplus of uh, 2,212,569. Uh, but uh, 1,396,266 unfavorable year to date. Again, that reference goes all the way back to that IMRF payment. One thing I want to point out in the budget is that we are now 75% done with the year. So if you guys are looking at line items, anything that's 75% is right on board. Anything that's over is, uh, obviously over 75% is over budget. But again, many of these things are uh, particular for the year and that uh, month to month expense. Anything that's under 75%, we are uh, tracking as under budget for the year. Okay, you know, got any good questions? Thank you, sir. Very well. Thank you. No questions? Yes, All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next item on the agenda is the director's report. All right, I'm going to short and sweet because we have a big agenda tonight. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to let you know of is that Gemini Junior High has a charity basketball game every year, and Sasha had the great idea of us becoming sponsors of their game this year as a promotional opportunity because it's a real good core of um, people from around the district. It's the, the Junior High for all of District 63. And so um, we are going to be sponsors for them, and they are giving us the opportunity for Linda to do the tip-off at the beginning of the game. Wow. So that will be nice. Very fun. And that is on Friday. So and they get, it's a very big event for the school, so it's, lots of people are there. And, and, and the game is between the faculty, the teachers, are playing against each other. So a lot of fun. Um, I wanted to let you know the good news that I got the official letter from the Illinois Secretary of State's office that we did get our per capita grant again for this year. They did put the precautionary note that they don't know when we'll actually get it. But they said that last year too, and we did get it by the end of June. So that's a good thing. Um, and then, of course, as I had mentioned to you all, that at the Night of Roses, we are receiving a special honor. Um, and so if any of you want to attend that, you need to let Diane know. Um, probably tonight would be good. So, um, And then the last thing is um, big news from CCS. They have been working for the last year on trying to decide whether we would renew our contract with our current computer company, CCS, uh, Cersei Dynex, or if we would switch to a new one. And they went through a very lengthy and detailed analysis of it from all the different angles of the database, the circulation part, cataloging, public services, IT, um, is there one more group? Anyway, all of the different groups, Cindy was a big part of that. And um, at the governing board last week, we voted to move from Cersei Dynex to Innovative Polaris. So we have not migrated in over a decade. It's going to be a real big deal. Um, but I think that there are going to be many benefits to it. And it, one of the things that we like about it is it's more web-based, it's more browser-based. 
the current setup. Rich has to go around every time they do an update and touch every single computer in the building. Mm -hmm. And I'm one, going to be ecstatic to get away from that model of doing things. So it's very big news. It will um, it will be a lot of staff time going to be getting ready for it. Um, but I think in the timeline for that is one year from now. We'll be going live with the new catalog and the new back end. That is the highlights of my report. Please do read it though. There are lots of reports from the uh, department heads and lots of info interesting information. And of course, I want to remind you that at the end of every director's report is the trustee calendar that tells you all the upcoming events. Mm -hmm. Five couple comments. Yes. Um, I uh, want to applaud you for, uh, for the private bank uh, donation of $1,000. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, also, uh, Ariana, she's not here, right? Tonight? Oh, she's here. Okay, very nice. The teen job fair, outstanding. That is just, I applaud you to no end. Don Block, my team librarian. Mm -hmm. Oh, she, man. She did yeah. all the chasing and had the vision and made it, made it happen. Absolutely. I mean, what a wonderful thing to do for the community, right? The that's crowd. one thing that we're here for, right? Yep. That's fantastic. Um, uh, Neil on the Neil hosting the American Doughboys of World War II. Mm -hmm. Twelve patrons applauded. Uh, what did the other patrons do? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Matt uh, uses a coding database. It's outstanding as well. And uh, all in all, oh Victoria, how, how wonderful that you were able to uh, replace the open time position with two current time people. Um, very good. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. so I mentioned in terms of programs that Neil puts on, maybe it'll be the next month one, but uh, Barbara and I went to a most, most recent one he did, he had put on regarding that drainage department. And we thought it was very interesting. Right. It was very good. And I think he put it in a chart. Uh -huh. it, it, so, yeah. it was, it was uh, really. That is one of the most interesting or necessary things here. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you for saying it. Okay. How about this? Go ahead. I'm sorry. I just wanted to say there's one other event here at the uh, uh, Gardner Club that has a, that has a class. And I attended it. And I was very impressed because the speaker was one of the speakers that's hired routinely by the Botanic Garden. A very, very uh, well known, very good speaker, very knowledgeable by the time. And she was great. Our library speaking. That's great. Yes, that was also wonderful. Oh, yeah. Communication. Um, we do have a lot of communications, so just I wanted to be sure that you saw all of them. We have a nice thank you note to our outreach crew. We have a letter from the White House, as you can see, it is a little bit old, so it's Barack Obama writing the letter. Uh, we had two very nice thank you notes from Bright Beginnings Preschool for Clara, and then the letter that follows that to dear to Mr. Jerry. Jerry is one of our book buddies. And so this was addressed to him. He works out of the children's department and actually is Claire's husband. Um, and then I have a lovely email from Mr. Karshna about two of our staff members. And I just wanted to read into the record that he said, the information I required was not easy to find, but they checked a variety of different sources and after an arduous search, they somehow managed to come up with the specific information I needed for my presentation. I was extremely impressed and greatly appreciated the concerted effort they made to find the information I needed. Most people, myself included, are quick to criticize or complain, but rarely praise someone when they receive exceptional service. So I really appreciated that. We have our note from the Niles uh, Chamber saying that we got our special award, and then our official letter from the Secretary of State. Yeah, and I also want to applaud you on uh, your ability to decipher what same people are saying as I read through these. Uh, sometimes I have no idea what it is. So, uh, can I ask one thing? What is geocaching? Um, it's a funny thing where people can hide an object somewhere in the building, say, and then you can plot a coordinates of where to find it. And that's like the clue for people then to use a device to find the things. 
Yeah, that's been going on for 10 years and it's Ten years. all over the company, Ten country. Years. No. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, <laughs> but it's basically using GPS coordinates to, to locate things. And that, so you, the idea is that you find the thing in, like sort of a treasure sure. trove, and then you put something of yours in and you take the thing that's Oh, very nice. So it's a hobby. All right. Under the frustrations, uh, some fell, uh, person said, uh, Movies to be on Saturday. Also, in the book, no blue background. You can see that we know what he's talking about. That, that took some translating. I think Diane and I together managed yeah. to figure out yeah. that yes, that uh, the movies they're experimenting with different nights of the week. So they they had been on Saturdays. Now they they I think had it on a Monday. And then in chapter one, the particular movie that she had just attended, the cover of it had a blue picture, and the background in chapter one was blue. And that seems to ah, be the also, somebody recognized Jason. I'm going to echo that. He's a, he's a, a wonderful young man. Uh, he's very cool. Um, and the special recognition uh, from the um, Chamber of Commerce, it, it just says special recognition. What, is there a any well, corollary to that, or anything? You know, we uh, we actually applied for the or tried to we nominated ourselves for the Corporation of the Year or, or Corporate Citizen Corporate Citizen of the Year, and, and apparently they wanted to give it to somebody else mm -hmm. who we have worked with here too, and they are really great. The Home Depot that's up there, <laughs> yeah. yeah, they they have been really great, but they still I think wanted to give us something, so okay. they came up with something to give us. Special. Yeah. Right, that very makes nice. us more special, doesn't it? Great. Right. <laughs> I guess what we're doing, kudos, I can give a, a shout out to Donna Black because she came to Maine South for us for the National Library Week. Mm -hmm. And she handed out, I mean, the kids loved them. They were some light up bracelets and frisbees and pens. And she had a lot of the team programming, how to upload and download different um, things, and also highlight a lot of the, uh, the printing and the media options that we have there, which a lot of kids were really interested in. So it was really a great event. So I appreciate that. Two. And then, as soon as they hear at work that I'm going to a board meeting, I get multiple teachers telling me about how great the library is. So it's so nice to hear. It's nice to hear at work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So building the grounds, <coughs> Barbara. I'm sorry. Hi. Uh, I think uh, I know that everybody's got um, in their package. Everybody received the uh, documents prepared by Dan Forte from Product Architecture outlining the proposed assignment for the library. Everybody's had a chance to review those, and I see that there's a motion uh, to approve uh, uh, solicita solicitation of bids uh, for this signage. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is the liaison report from the library. There were there wasn't a meeting. Um, legislative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, okay, in rails. Yeah. Nothing else. Okay. All right. So moving on. All right. Yeah, okay, great. Eleven. All right. We have national secretaries. New business. Okay, we have a very substantial agenda tonight, so we're going to um, try to keep things moving. I'm going to ask the trustees wait to be recognized before speaking so that I give everyone a chance to speak and so I can keep it going. Um, item under new business is to approve the 2017-2021 strategic plan. Do I hear a motion? So, I so move. Barb and Patty. Okay, so we discussed the plan at our last meeting um, and Susan was going to make a couple of changes. Changes, are there any further? Is there any further discussion on the changes? I just have a small note that uh, Mr. Bob actually noticed that we had a typo on the front sheet saying survey takers ranged from 13 to 7, and that would be 7D. reconsider um, approving this next month after our two new board members are part of our group since it's a five-year strategic plan and they have not had any 
um, input in terms of um, what we're doing or how we're proceeding, would it matter if we waited one more month and include them in this process? Linda? Yeah, go ahead. I, 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 I think, I'd like to think that we could go ahead and approve that tonight only because the uh, two existing, but the current trustees were involved in uh, putting together that strategic plan. And actually, I can piggyback on that. Diane was involved too on the day that mm -hmm. um, she was there throughout the whole meeting in the time that we met. I met. I met. They have not had any input as far as discussion to move forward, even at this stage. I mean, the, she did come to your right. it was like our wish list where everybody picked things they'd like to do. But the thing so, is, this is the board that has planned it and has actually scrutinized everything. So I think this is the board that should be actually voting on it. So then I have a question. What are we actually voting on? Because when I re reviewed this last month, I noticed the cover sheet is identical to the cover sheet when we began. So we were in the early stages of creating a strategic plan. And then last month, we were supposed to be ready to approve it. So we went line by line, and we cleaned up a few things. But what it is, is it's a complete list of generalities. Is that what we're approving? Because there's, there's no... Um, specifics as far as what our goal is and how we're going to get there. When do we come up with all that information? Because that's what I'm looking to approve. Well, I mean, Are we ahead? Am I ahead of that? Or? Yeah, I mean, we've covered this. This is You asked this question last month, and the, my question, remain, my answer remains, this is the board's philosophical feeling about where the library should be going. This is the board setting the library's direction for the next five years. It's you telling us where you want us to spend our time and attention. Um, it's the things that you heard back from our patrons that they thought were important, where they wanted to see improvements in the library, or they think that things could be better. And then the next step of this um, is for me to go back with my team and develop the work plan that spells out step-by-step step how to carry this out. But there are goals here. There are four goals here, and these are the these are the goals of the strategic plan. So then, my question is, for example, just to make sure I understand, the goal is to connect the right people with the right content at the right time, the right way. So you're going to come up with what that actually means in terms of all the library staff accomplishing that goal, and that's something that we'll approve later. The investments here are the ways of carrying those out, but then those still have to be broken down further. Um, you'll be doing some of the finalizing library name change tonight, but the rather, rest of the things define most likely target segments, for example, that my team would be figuring out how are we going to go about doing that. You know, Evaluate the intent, scope, and content of the print newsletter. I know that's something that's of concern to you. We will be figuring out ways to analyze that um, so in ways it could be changed and that so that that will then become the work plan <coughs> that will have a timeline on it it will be will say okay. it'll be done by this, this time it will cost approximately this much money and that once that is put together it comes back to the board for the board to approve the work plan but this is the strategic so this plan is general? Plan. This is the philosophy <coughs> of the okay. board. Fine. I just wanted to know when we were going to have like the, the specific goals, and that's what you plan on doing in your next. Phase. Yeah. I can. Okay. That's fine because yeah. actually there's nothing concrete here, but it, it's a lot of generalities, and I, now I understand it. Thank you. Right, thank you. Brad, did you have a question? Oh, just somebody who's gone through uh, strategic planning before, not in the library sense, but in the school. Um, the goal should be general, they're overarching. So the idea is to then use those goals to direct or drive the more specific details as the plan moves forward. Right, but I, I, in, in my school we were a little more specific. I guess they were a little harder on us. But as long as it's the next phase, it's fine with me. Thank you. Thanks. Hi, uh, Jamie, 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 Jamie. Hey, Barbara? Yes, Brad? Yes. 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 And here Yes. Andy? Yes. Linda? Yes. Here. Here. Okay. Um, item, item B. Mr. Cooper proposed logo for the Niles Main District Library. Do I hear a motion? So we're going to see it. Second. So great. Second. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Susan, can you please show us the logos? Um, I, I would have not to do that, but I just wanted to explain what instructions I gave to the marketing team. We also have our artist here, who also can speak to this 
you would like. Um, I, what I ask for them to do is I feel like the, I like the name Niles Main District Library, but I also feel like it could come across a little bit stern, kind of like, I don't know, very, very officious sounding. And so I asked them to try to come up with something that took that and made it look a little friendlier. And particularly in our old logo, it just with the all caps and everything, it looked just very, I don't know, very, very dignified. And so I think they've done a fantastic job. And that has done a wonderful job of coming up with three possibilities for you that uh, make the library look welcoming and approaching, approachable and friendly. So Sasha, can you please show us I'm what excited. you guys developed? It's exciting. Unveil. Unveil already. Unveil already. First and foremost, I just want to say that after the board approved of the new name change, the marketing department with administration has been working very, very, very hard um, on brainstorming and coming up with um, some great ideas to show everyone this evening. So what you're going to see is three, three different logos. One is the current one, tweaked, and two brand new logos. Um, and before I unveil the first one, I just want to say that each of them, just so you can visualize it a little better, we've taken the logos and applied it to like the cover of chapter one, our current library cards, and the library van, and a couple promotional items that we typically buy first for programs and patrons and whatnot. Right. So the first one is, everyone ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a very familiar, let me go this way, a very familiar logo to everybody. The teardrop is still there. The, the building um, is still in the teardrop. Um, but as Susan mentioned, we went away from going all capital letters and the font that we're currently, use, currently using is a little bit more corporate feel, is a little bit more friendly. Um, just the first letter of each word is capitalized, not the whole name of the library. Uh, we've also included the four key words from our mission statement that was approved as part of the strategic plan, engage, inform, enrich, and educate. Um, a pro of sticking with this logo is uh, patrons are used to the teardrop. Uh, we've been using it since the library renovation, which has been like three or four years now. Um, uh, a con that we see when we're kind of going through everything is um, historically, we actually compiled all the logos that we've had at the library, and they've always been geared towards uh, the architecture of the building. And we felt, we feel that we are more than just this building. Um, and now that you'll have a choice to move on to something else, maybe you wouldn't want to choose the building again. Um, another small con is, might be hard to see if anybody wants to come up after I'm done presenting, is the smaller we make the teardrop, the harder it is to identify the building in the teardrop. Um, and also because of its shape, um, the larger it goes, sometimes it overpowers and you can't, you can, I mean, you can still read Niles, public library district, but the teardrop can't overpower since it is kind of large. So that's option number one. These two options that are coming up next are brand new options. Um, option number two looks like this. So option number two, you see it in color in black and white with a variation underneath it. In creating this logo, our main focus was from all my time that I've been at the library, we've actually gone through a couple of rebrands and new logos. But the biggest difference with this rebrand is we're actually changing our name, which is going to be new to the whole community. North End, right across the street from the library, it's going to be new to everybody. So though this may not look like a traditional choice, our main focus here was to put it in the patron's face that we are changing our name and this is our new identity. But we did keep our same color palette that patrons are used to, especially on our van, <laughs> which is yeah, so colorful that. <laughs> that I'm sure the, yeah. the patrons in the community know our color palette. Um, and um, this logo actually started with just highlighting N and M. And then when Annette and I were talking, I'm like, why don't you try N, M, D, L? Sometimes it's a tongue twister to say it. Um, and then when we moved on forward, we're like, what if you added library to the end? And that's basically what we are. We are a library. And it doesn't, it doesn't get any better highlighted than actually spelling it out there. Um, one of the things that Susan also mentioned is she would like, she likes like when you see a FedEx van, even though it's white but it has the FedEx logo, you know automatically, even if it just has like that secret that's in the logo, which is like the arrow, you would know right away it's FedEx. Same with Amazon. There's probably a lot of Amazon trucks in the community, white van, just plop that little A, and you know that it's Amazon. 
we feel that if we plot this somewhere, we may be new to somebody because we changed our name, but library is highlighted, which is very, very important. At the very least, you'll know that the library is coming around. Um, also, to kind of show you that we didn't steer too, too far away from what we're working with right now, um, each letter is a different color, which kind of goes with the bars. Um, and uh, we also really like uh, the fact that the logo is not overpowering because most times the logo is not by itself. Um, we have um, giant banners um, that have other pieces of information on there, and we feel like it wouldn't compete with something else that we're trying to promote um, with whatever the piece is. Um, a con that we see is um, there's not an icon that's attached to it, like the teardrop. Um, but because of its simplicity, and I feel like once we start rolling out the new name and our community starts to get used to our new name and our new look, um, it lends itself to possibly add something in the future. That's option number two. And last but not least is option number three. So option number three, um, similar to option number two, is we wanted to keep um, the color scheme there so we didn't go too far off uh, from our identity. Um, these actually two fonts are the same. Um, this one is a little bit more of a corporate feel, I should say, um, for how the how the font looks and even the logo itself. Um, uh, and you also see it here applied um, on the different applications. Um, you can kind of, the, what we saw with like the, the bars kind of going upward, it was maybe a sense of positivity, um, this upward movement, um, if you want, if you can see that. Um, those are some positive parts to it. Um, with kind of applying this logo to different pieces, uh, first and foremost, uh, a lot of times we don't want to print in color to save cost. So, um, for example, like a lot of our promotional items are just one color. It's either our general Nile is blue, or they're black, or they're white. When Annette was taking, we went in steps, and we were taking it to the next level, and she switched it to black, did we totally lose our personality of the colors, which is, which is a negative. And even when it's in white, compared to what these other two logos look in white, the joke that I was making, and I hate to make it, is it looks like the N and the M are like on fire. <laughs> you know, a little bit, I mean, I have to you just be honest um, uh, with, with that's unfortunately just how it turned out. Um, we did hear some feedback um, from some staff members that they felt that maybe it looked like a hospital logo, that it was a logo for New Mexico, because the N and the M are highlighted. Um, but those are just some, some thoughts from some of the staff members. Um, and that, am I missing anything? Um, no, I think you okay. covered that. I'm sure. Because you helped with the presentation. So these are the three choices. Um, I guess we'll take it to discussion. Um, and what are some of your thoughts? I don't know where to stand. Where to stand? Yeah. Yeah. If, if you want to walk around and look close, more closely at um, some of the applications. I already have a minute paper. OK. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we do have Annette here this evening who created all the logos, um, and you know, should be happy to answer any design questions. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Because we love it was hard to, and I feel like the main mobile would be the four letters, but when it landed in to itself that we could go full the library. Um, I wanted to show you other options, but you make the library options. Yeah, if you want to, it's a collective of the um, But like, I think he's a reason why Jeff was on the page. And maybe the strategic plan that they're going to sign. You know, if we just keep it. But the science has it. Because the water's in there. With libraries, you can get a full number. So we can show four letters. Um, so, um, so, yeah, yeah, so, so, um, so, that's one of the positive things that I'll switch into the library. There you go. Library, 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 versus before this year. The last word that actually the new name were able to do something Versus the way it is in the middle. In the middle, one. it's it's uh, lowercase letters. 
you know, from the beginning of the letter. Mm -hmm. The last one was capsule. Is that capsule? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yes, I like capsule. Anyway, so I'm kind of leaning towards the left line. I, you know, I apologize to all the hip people here. Who are the <laughs> Okay, I have to say they are three distinct charts. I mean, I like all of them, uh, but I really like the middle one. And I have to say my reasoning is, well, I agree the left one on the right looks like it's in, they're engulfed in some sort of flame. Um, and, and this is what we've always had. And I guess I, I'm kind of starting to realize that we're more than a building. But in terms of the center one, I think the color scheme is incredible. But I also noticed today everything's all about a few letters distinguish an entire corporation or an entire whatever. And I, I think the color is awesome. The word library stands out. And I really do like the middle one. That's my opinion. Originally, I was going to go say yes for the middle one. The, the one on the right like you're saying, the, the way the letters are, but the things going up, because we're talking here about the teardrop shape being overpowering, to me, that's overpowering when you get small, even. But the difference I would make with this one, if we decided this one, would be, like they said, with the other ones having the engage and form in capital in the first letter being capitalized because I think it stands stands out more um, I still do like the original but and I between those two I could go either way but I, I like the middle one a little bit more and I was leaning toward the, actually the two end ones but I have to agree, I don't like the black with the cityscape because I did think it was more Chicago type cityscape and I don't know if I like the two, the M and the M, um, as, a, as our logo. Um, I did, and, and I hate to say it because I really do like the colors too, I completely agree with you Carolyn, I do like this. But it does, but I have to agree too that it does kind of look a little juvenile to me mm -hmm. with the lower case. And I don't know, but I like that you could just put NMDL somewhere and that would eventually stand with the library. So that, but I'm just not in love with the lower case. Um, I like the color. I still like the continuity of our teardrop. I think that I, I do like this one the best and I still kind of go gravitate to it just because it's kind of like a comfort zone. It just feels like this is what our library is and this is who we are. If we change the name, I don't want to change everything about it. I don't want people to think that we're completely we're different. We're just encompassing our whole community. Um, I do like the commas between each of the words too. Mm -hmm. I, I do like that it, it kind of separates each one. Besides, I do like Barbara's idea too about the different colors. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of gonna, and I kind of feel bad because I like that all the creativity, but I still do kind of like this. It's okay. It's no, okay. I feel it's guilty. I feel guilty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Um, I uh, I think this is a very handsome looking logo. I think it, the way Annette has refreshed it makes it look. Mm -hmm. much sharper and I like a lot. The middle one was my favorite and I still like it a whole lot but I do agree with the idea that this would be continuity and then I can really see where in three or four years we maybe are going to be tired of those colors. They, they'll have gotten a little worn out and because we've had them already for several years now. We've right. had our colors before the village picked almost identical colors. <laughs> so, um, so I can see where we might want to change things up and so maybe in three or four years we'll want to rebrand anyway. So I can see where yeah. that might get another crack at developing a new logo if you do decide to go with this one. And, and then people will be used to our name so it won't be yes. like everything well, exactly. completely yeah, changed. Uh -huh. it's, it's and then we can kind of re no, you're right. That makes sense. It does make a lot of sense. And, and the more you talk about it, this does get more juvenile. Yeah. 
because of the and, and, and I, you know, but I still really place. like it. It's not. I, do I too. know. It, that's why it's difficult. It's yeah. difficult to really. Um, I like those four letters to be like that's us. But aren't you aren't you afraid that people are going to say what's Nundle? <laughs> no, but maybe if that's how they marketed it for a while prior, yeah, but and then all of a sudden, I, 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 I know, I don't want to be in. I, I think it looks great for the children. What about the NM? Yeah. You know. No, absolutely. All right. All right. You know, you so know what I wouldn't mind doing, Linda. Just, yeah. just. I know that this is a very casual discussion. Yeah. It's probably we shouldn't. Uh, you know, Robert's rule should be done. But I wouldn't mind asking everybody just to. Uh, just to raise your hand on, on number one, two, or three, <laughs> just, just to see. Oh, you mean the public? Yeah, everybody. Sure, but that, yeah. I mean, it's everybody's life. There you go. What do you guys think? Who, 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 no. So who's for picture number one or for, for logo number one? <laughs> who raised your hand, please? Well, there's an old cast. All right, good. Two. All right, all right. Let's start at the bread. Are we? OK. Three, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Let's do one more. Logo number one. Logo number one. Okay, how about logo number two? Oh my gosh. Anyway, so just to move forward, well, I think it's really. Uh, we, have, we have a discussion. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so the yeas and nays, so we go with the board members. Yay and nay. Who would like this one with the colored wording on the underneath the Niles, the different colors? Show me this. Okay. Show I guess I could go with it. It doesn't bother So then two of these. Yeah. So, so we'll be voting on this one. I could go for that one without any problem. I don't feel bad. But in another few years, we can give it a chance. No, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. It's like trade yeah. yeah. I think yeah. it's still, so, I know. I know. And the color scheme will be. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so, um, if Diane, would you please take a look? Okay, so that's for the traditional. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. All right, so Karen. Um, yes. yes. Barbara? Yes. Rob? Yes. Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Andy? Yes. Linda? Yes. It's not a, I think it looks great. It's kind of, it's kind of bad. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Observation, the colors might get, uh, needs to change. Then yes. Then we'll figure it out. But, uh, then we'll be able to get We might have our people know. Um, okay. Thank you, everyone, for everyone's input. I appreciate that. We all appreciate that. Um, I need a motion to approve C. So let's see what C is. Okay. So approve the payment of twelve thousand five hundred dollars to Communico for the installation and implementation of the digital publishing kit. Digital publishing platform including Communico Control, Communico Connect, Sites, Broadcast, Attend, Reserve, and Mobile Modules and Applications. So motion. So move. Second Karen. Okay. So Susan, please tell us about Communico. Okay. 
Um, many of the libraries in the uh, northern half of the state have moved to Communico or are moving to Communico partly because they have a big deal with rails right now where we're getting a little bit of a price break and we're not having to pay the setup fee for it. Um, what it does is um, it's a one-stop place where we enter the information that we have about our programs or anything going on at the library or anything that we want to promote goes into this one, the Communico Cloud, they call it, and then from there, it can become a part of a website. It can be pulled into our existing website, or we can use their website to build a new one. It can be broadcast to any of our digital signage, and one of the elements of the strategic plan is to try to improve wayfinding in the building and to promote our programs more so that that information gets to more people. So it would um, it's very customizable. So if we have screen and the youth services department say it could be programmed just to be showing the youth services programs and it could be at different times of day, it could be doing school oriented things during the afternoon. It's very, very, it's a very powerful tool, which is why it is as much money as it is. Um, the next part is that it would be a mobile app. We have never had a mobile app here. Um, we have a responsive website, which kind of reconfigures to fit a phone, but it's really not as easy to use as a mobile app would be. And the mobile app would also work with the catalog as well as our own website. Um, many libraries have had Boopsy in the past, and so this would be you know, sort of a replacement for Boopsy. Um, and then attend is where patrons would actually get to see um, the programs that we have. And it can shoot them out in all sorts of directions. It sends people text messages and uh, and then it also has a room marketing piece to it, a room booking piece to it, so that the staff, for example, would be booking the room when they're putting a program in, but this also is for um, reserving study rooms, and, all, and Diane does a great deal of booking of outside programs, um, and so she would be booking the programs using this tool as well. But you can, so with booking the study rooms, you can do it at home is what you're saying? Or well, we have a different tool for that currently, and I don't know if we would immediately start using this for that purpose, but it uh, but it could be used for that. Yeah. That's it's pretty cool. Yeah. It, it really, it's a very powerful thing. It does a lot of different things. Um, and the current thing that we're in right now, the, uh, the only piece of this that we have right now is a thing called Evans, which is you know, our consultant, Rob Cullen, when he was here, that was actually his company. And he built it. It was, for a long time, the only game in town. Then they sold it to another vendor. And the, the other vendor has really not been developing it very much. And so we have the classic version of it. We'll be forced to move to the new version of it. And as I said in my notes, we had a demo of the new version. and. It did not look very good. It, uh, it would not be a good move for us, I don't think. It's, it looks, they have just not, they seemed like they were extremely understaffed. And very little was going into that part of it since they're part of a great big company now. And Rob is very big on Communico now. A lot of the advanced people went to Communico. So um, I, I think uh, the supervisors and some and the assistant supervisors, everybody that books programs, Diane, all had a chance to work with us a little bit, and we all. I think it looks like a great thing. It is, it's a little, you know, it, it's some money. Um, I, we would be paying for it out of per capita funds. We have per capita money from this year and we would pay for it again next year. And then we would assess and see if it looked like it was going to be worth that money. So we, there's more than enough in well, yes. per capita yes. the grant. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. Okay. So there, right. But I'm saying there's more than enough to cover it. Yeah, so, yep. so is this a usage fee? Is that what we're paying? It's like a licensing fee, I suppose. Okay. So yeah. It's a yearly fee that we pay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It is. So uh, we get a discount through Rails, is that? We do. Are, is Rails fit it out, or do they? Um, they uh, just, we just get a discount through. It's it's yeah, Rails. They I, I don't know who if Rails approached them or they approached Rails, but what they're discounting specifically is the installation fee. Um, and the way this works is that they install it in groups. And so this is to be in the next group of libraries going live. Um, if we don't take it at this time, I actually think the price would go up instead of down. And this price is good for two years then? This price, this is the two year price, yes. It's actually 28 months for some reason. We'll there yeah. is some ability to um, interweave this product with the upcoming um, catalog that we're moving to. Yeah. So uh, there, there also can be some connectivity with this new catalog, so that wasn't an advanced feature. The advanced people 
want to develop that, but they have yet to, and our concerns with their staffing, the person who was walking us through it was unable to answer questions at a very basic level. And these guys already have oh, this connectivity. Oh, the the other people couldn't right. answer. Yeah. I thought, oh, wow. The ones where you're Thank you. So um, Thank you. we're looking at this to come out of the capital expenditures? For capital grant. Oh, okay. for capital grant. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. We were founded in the UK in 2006, I launched our first year as a customer in 2007. Oh, and I think the background of the company, because they will be having our information. Yeah. So, if they've done a good back, I mean, I would think Rails, if Rails is backing us, have done a good background check on them since we're going to be uploading our patron information, which is extremely well, so they important to us. Know, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, even if it's just the phone numbers, which they'll have to send the text messages, yes. you know, right. so right. Um, an email addresses, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have to have names, they just really have to have the, you know, the uh, links to send out information. Okay, scroll down a little bit, I just want to read a little more. There's a number of reputable libraries working with them currently. Total mm -hmm. Open Launch, Schomburg, Indian Turtles, Indian Prairie, Downers Grove, um, Skokie, Cuyahoga County. There's Downers Grove version of it. Yeah. So oh, I think okay. that they they have really, and these libraries, will be, Downers Grove was in the first initial group. And they have, you know, we're very pleased with the outcome. Okay, so then they've been kind of helping marketing and saying yes. how wonderful they are. Yeah. Once they, everyone can see it, I say, I like the color, it's very, visually it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and then the filter by age group, event type, I really like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, look at that. That's exactly mm -hmm. what we're talking about. Right. Yeah, that's nice. I was going to say, I think this, this uh, yeah, like, immediately it connects, it connects to uh, our fourth goal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And so that's a, and it's great to know that this is a, Part of the grant as well. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. And how much how is how left in the grant? To get this one. Just mm -hmm. um, I have. Wait, isn't it it's like forty-four something? It, yeah, it's forty-four. I think I had twenty thousand dollars left in that book, which I has to be spent by June thirtieth. So you know what we would do if we weren't spending it on that is we would you know we have other things that we would spend it against. But I think that this would be a good and use of it. And this for two years, so we could really see. This is yeah, this would be. It's still it's we'd still pay twelve five again next year, right. but it's right. a two year sure. test of it. And uh, what's the current product called? It's called Evanced. Evanced. Do yeah. we pay for and that? And it's just the calendar. Yeah. Do we pay for that at this point? We do. Yeah, yeah. and we actually yeah it's it was thirteen hundred dollars this year, oh. but we are going to be able to get that again because. Classic line, they're not going to be supporting no. in the future, okay. so we're going to have to go to the end, end of life. life. Oh. What's that? End, end of, of life. life, yes. So if you click on like that 9 30 infant, you know, Wednesday, if you scroll down and just click on one of the programs, what is it? Oh, it gives you a little like a hover and it tells you about it. Yep, and then here's oh, the cool. And you okay. can add graphics to this screen, which is I kind of neat. Real, oh, 83 seats for meaning. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And then here was one example. Where you um, so you really plug so in here's where you all the register. information on the program. Yes. So yeah, it's very that's a great place just for the tool. Just and then everyone can see it from age department to department yeah. to department. Oh yeah. 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 And library to library to library. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe you could even not have something or piggyback even on neighboring library. This is good. I like it. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out this register uh, more people feature, which we do not have currently on Evanced. Um, usually what people do is they'll put, you know, Sasha Vasilik, and then in the notes would put like, I'm bringing six people. Oh. But it doesn't count as six people. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So you can only imagine when they sure. come on the door and you don't have room for them because sure. they didn't, you know, include well, them. Well, I have to go there. back and register my wife again. Yeah, so you have to do it separately. So it is nice that you can add more people right. to the one time. Yeah, that's really nice. The first time you register, you can add up people sure. instead of having to go. Take it right. Yeah, isn't it immediate then? Does it yeah. take it, the six people off immediate? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And I like that you can get text messages for the events. That's yeah. so mm -hmm. a lot of people. Does it separate like reminder? Yeah, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Very well, that's nice. Okay. And the current events only will send you an email to notify you, right. the fact that they're doing text, which I feel like is probably the 
quickest way people find out about things nowadays? Is there a nice feature? And one of the hiccups with the switch over to, from the classic to the, going to the new product with the current um, product is that they've outsourced the, those um, notifications. So you have to opt in to receive your reminder oh. emails, but the outside company that they're using, uh, you know, like Peter Diamond said, the emails were looking suspicious, and so they had a huge drop off in the emails. Wow. Who were, and the people who were opting in because they felt as if it wasn't part of this process. Mm -hmm. Sasha? Yes. The last line there, oh, I'm sorry, was that out of the way while we were just done? It says, we can notify you by SMS. What is that? Text message. SMS? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Simple okay. message. I guess I'm old, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Same thing. I so have no clue what the heck. Yeah, so, um, to answer the questions. Uh, in regards to uh, people who have registered for events that will occur after we install this, how do we reconcile that situation? How do we, how do we get them back into this system? It, it imports. We're going to import over like a quarter. It'll import oh, it, the data. it is an import function? Um, and we're hoping to do it, you know, at the beginning of the newsletter cycle. Okay. That way you're not having to worry about, you know, we launched a newsletter, everyone's registered, now we can move over people who have registered. Sure. But we're okay. going to try to move over the data of, you know. So we're not losing any registration yeah. currently. Yeah. Cool. Great. And, and I heard that importing was very good. It was. It worked yeah, it well, to except pretty, for the emails. Is that what you were? But that was for the old product. Oh, the old product. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But the um, kind of the migration of the data, as long as we get it out and of our current platform, it should be no problem. And that's all included in the 1200. So yes. there's not an extra uh, yes. importing. You know. Oh, oops. That's an extra 10,000. Yeah. Right. And, and Tim, you had asked me by email about the it, widgets, and widgets are just part of how they pull the information, and it's not an extra charge for that. Yeah, it was just, um, uh, you know, unfortunately, I'm not the actually know. The, the one page listed, uh, like, eight widgets or something, and then the other page only listed yes. a certain level in number, and yeah. then you didn't cancel it there. I, I don't know specifically, but there are definitely parts of this that they are still developing that are not part of this yet. Um, no, that wasn't and the, the, the opening, the one page had a, 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 a graphic. Um, it had the, the, the three applications and multiple widgets around it. Okay. Okay. And then, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then later on yeah. in the document, you actually are listing which widgets we are getting. Yeah, right? yeah. Because we're not we're not getting rolled because that okay. would be an extra. Then, then you're also missing. Then go through account. You're also missing one of the other widgets that's on that graphic. I think discover. Discover. Yes. Which is a ILS. So that's that would right. be. Yeah, it would be if we're going with um, Susie Dynex and we have Susie Dynex, that's what it would be. It's trying to be an ILS. So you would be putting a skin over our data for so the catalog would look and function a little bit differently. We're getting that or we're not getting that. We're not we're getting that. Not. Because our new Polaris catalog is going to be different anyway. It's part of why we wanted Polaris, so that we really don't need what we'd be asking for. And that would be an extra charge. They're developing a summer reading product too that we may or may not want to go with, but it's not ready yet anyway, so it's a moving point. Um, I just have one more quick question. So I'm looking at this onboarding questionnaires. It, so you can create some type of surveys or questionnaires, or is this something about the importing piece? That is something that we would get from them after we sign the contract. Uh, and okay. they like, like, look in the field yeah. when you want to launch, and uh, we go ahead and fill out this whole document. We give it back to them, and they kind of know what they're working with. I understand. So that's kind of your it's their initial set of yes, kind of yes. kind of things like what exactly. you're looking for. Gotcha. Like the like your settings. Exactly. Things. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Again, are we getting Discover or not getting Discover? Not we are getting Discover. We are not getting Discover. Are getting it, don't want it. We don't want it. Okay. That's fine. And we don't want to roam. We are getting reserved. Okay. And we are getting widgets. Right. Well, widgets is just the general, those, that general category thing. So there are oh, many widgets wait, that are built into it. Oh, wait, looks here. The graph makes it looks like there's three applications. It does. It's yeah. not really the widgets are these. Oh, here. Yeah, okay. That's a little confusing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Do we have any further questions? Yeah. And we're looking at this in July 1st. Um, I think they would start implementing it July 1st. I don't think we would be going live to it. Okay. September, October. So, oh, the 12th. Yeah, for the fall. Yeah. All right. It'll take a while to get it up. Okay. Um,
Okay, Karen? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Brad? Yes. Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Thank you for that discussion. It was really helpful to clarify. Thank you, everyone, for your input. Um, okay. D? Item D is to approve that the Niles Public Library District apply to the U.S. Department of State's Chicago Passport Agency to become a passport agent. Wait. Department of State's Chicago Passport Agency to become a passport agency. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, and Patty? Maybe hey, Susan, can you sum up your plan? Yes. Greg and I have worked on this together. Cindy has also been helping us do all the research and everything. And we finally decided that the best way to handle this is to do it through our patron services department, just like the, the circulation department. Um, that department has a, team, a set of team leaders so that there's always somebody down there in charge so that they would be able to be like the second pair of eyes on the passport application at all, during all the hours of the library, the library is open. Um, Greg has put together some numbers here and estimates of how uh, how many hours it would be taking and the payment of the, the level of people that would be working at this desk. Um, from what we understand from other people, we would be starting this in the slow period. So we would be kind of getting off to a nice slow start on it, which is good, I think. Um, give us a chance to kind of get everybody trained and get a little bit, you know, get some of the bugs ironed out in it. And, um, and then when, by the time the busy season hits in December or January, then people should be much more up to speed. We're going to put the actual desk down uh, at the Commons desk. We're going to put a little, um, we're not going to do an extensive building on that because we don't know if it's going to meet our permanent needs, but we're going to put in, um, we have to put in something that's got locking drawers and things like that so that we can keep everything secure. Um, and so, you know, if things go as we think it will, he's estimating a thousand passports the first year. If that goes smoothly and, and it is about 15 minutes per person, um, we would be making about $13,500. Um, but he does at the end here have the risks where you know he's saying the estimate of a thousand passports in the first year may be wrong. We just really are not going to know until we get into it. We are in kind of a key location here with some large surrounding suburbs and a lot of people that may want to travel and we're right by Chicago. And the passport, you know, the, the post office had very, very limited hours. Our own post office, you know, Saturday you have to get there, you know, you have to be finished by 1.30. They're done doing passports at 1.30. So, um, so you're, would you be finishing up that say an hour before closing? We would, yeah, we would close that desk. Um, so we would stop taking applications. We, I Hopefully we get good at estimating how many we could have, have in line, and then um, and then we would be stopping taking applications so that we could close that desk an hour before closing and we get everything ready to get sent off to the State Department. So is there an expense for filing the application itself? No, I don't think so. I mean, the, the people are paying all of the expenses. No, but I mean, but just to apply to be no, a passport no, agency. No, nothing like that. And when we apply before, we actually were not granted it, so you right. think we have a better chance of Yes, I think we're very, yeah. They, they seem to be actually encouraging libraries to, to do it. But yeah, before they were like, nope, not, not interested. Do we have any concerns about various payment terms? Uh, you, it's very limited. It's basically you come in with two checks, one for the library and one for the State Department. Uh, not necessarily, just regular checks. Is there any issue do you think with processing personal checks? No, we do that all the time. Okay. That's part of our regular service, so that would not be an issue. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you talk to us about staffing? Um, because um, I understand this obviously going to take more time. It is. But it's hard to predict how many people are coming in, when they're coming in. Right. Well, I mean, I think the. You know, yeah, it, you know, a lot of it will be learning as we go, but you know, uh, we have talked with the couple libraries that have implemented it already, so we have some idea from them. Um, the Commons desk where this would be located is right around the corner from the Patron Services Department, and so we have desks over there, and then we have people working behind the scenes, and then we always have a team leader or the supervisor on hand at all times. So. Um, Basically, any time we'll need to have two people that are trained available. So um, she's already picked out some key people on the staff that she thinks are particularly suited to this very detail-oriented, very good customer service skills to start getting trained. And 
Greg didn't ask me here, and I don't remember what he said. That the patron services is in J Greg's chain of command, so that's why he's handling some of this. Um, six clerks will be eligible initially, plus the patron services team leader, which is the number five. So 11 people that need to yes. start. Not bad. No. It's, Can you hold off hiring until you find out who you really are? Doing? Oh yeah, no, we are we, we aren't intending to hire immediately. We're intending to start with our existing staff, but I think realistically speaking, you know, as soon as it starts to heat up, particularly because most of it will be during weekend and evening hours. So you know, it, you'll have your crunch times even in the slower times of year. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have stampedes at ten o'clock in the morning. We're going to have stampedes at two o'clock in the afternoon. So um, you say if you do need to hire additional people, you expect to pay twenty dollars an hour fully loaded. Fully loaded. Okay. So he's talking about the benefits. And, okay. Yeah. And that's considering the new um, minimum wage. Yes. Yeah. Too. Yep. So you determined that it's only going to take fifteen minutes to process. The that's what you said. That's what it is for some of them. Some of them are clearly going to be more complicated than that because there are all kinds of family situations that it can be. But that seems to be the average from what we are doing. I've never seen anyone get a passport application process in 15 minutes. So. <laughs> My wife and I both got a 15 minutes. I went across the street and it. Oh, across the street, the street is <laughs> that sounds like, but, <laughs> yeah. 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 I think to the staff time, I mean, the, the wait for the passport, that may take people longer. They may get on the list and it may take them an hour or two hours to get out of here, but the face to face time with the staff member is the 15 minutes. Okay. Because because we're, we're assuming, can I just, we're assuming we're paying these, the staff $20 an hour, which includes benefits. So we think that based on what you'll, you're making, you'll make twenty-five dollars every fifteen minutes. You think fifty dollars in an hour? Well, he's—I mean—he's estimating for the number of. You know, you're not going to have a person there all the time. You're going to have people that can step over and do it right. from another desk. So, um, except during the really busy periods, when I anticipate it, probably will have to be staff all the time. But we think we need to hire staff. No, it, this doesn't discuss hiring oh. immediately. It's going to be seeing how it goes, and that's why I'm happy that it's starting. It's during the library's peak period, which is summer reading, but it's passport business's slow period. Uh -huh. So okay. we're hoping that we'll get a chance to get our feet wet here and get a better idea of how long things take and what our busier periods are and you know, we're starting off slow. Uh, photos here. We are not doing photos. Not coming photos. We would be giving people a list of places they can go to get their photos. So primarily, if people are coming in with their paperwork, their photos and their two checks, yep. they're taking them and they're leaving. Yeah, there's some questions being asked. Yeah, so the outside. So all the paperwork Yeah. So it shouldn't take Well, you know, I'm sure some of the situations are more complex. I, she, right. They were describing, you know, when you have like an adopted child and maybe they never told the child they were adopted and, you know, there are oh, all crazy. kinds of situations. Or some of them. That's like the. Paperwork's correct. And then, like, it's correct, correct. Right. And, and then yeah. if, if the paperwork isn't you know, complete, then those people, the applicant can step aside and yeah. uh, fill out paperwork. He doesn't right. have to do it while he's doing the one at yeah. time with the library. Right. I, I imagine it will be a stage kind of process where the first step would be getting your paperwork checked mm -hmm. by one person, and then you would be getting in the line to actually get the passport done. Mm -hmm. That's what the other libraries have done, and that seems very practical to me. Because there are a lot of pieces. You know, they have to have the right photo and it. And um, they have to have the checks. We can't do it without the checks and things like that. If we go along and we find that it's for whatever reason it is not working out for us, uh, are we? How bound are we to do this? I don't know. We can. Or they would. I mean, I'm sure we would need to give them some warning if sure. we were going to be withdrawing. But yeah. No. There's no we're not. No, it's not a lifetime commitment. It's good. To know. Yeah. It's good. To know. Yeah. There is no. Yeah. Pardon me. You'd be out of yeah. Desk. Right. Yeah. Well, she'll find me for it, I'm <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, the big thing is, like you were saying, some of the libraries you've already talked to, or the one library, it has been making money off of this. Oh, this is very much so. And so this might not yeah. be a bad thing. Yes. It it's, might decrease some of our other expenses. Yeah, it's, it's non-property tax revenue. And we're providing the community with good service. 
Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Gosh, I'm looking you know, forward to yeah. it. The post office is a line there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 Great. I went to the post office in another town that you haven't done because I figured it would be quicker in the car. I appreciate the estimate um, of yeah, what the expenses are, you know, compared to the cost. Yeah. So, Very and what we would thing. actually have a net surplus. So that just helps, kind of. We know yeah. it's an estimate. Yeah. Obviously, no one can, but you know, based on the community um, and our neighboring, uh, you know, venues, I think that really, that really helps. So, appreciate uh, that. One quick question: Does yeah. the State Department have to come out and verify it, or yes, I think they do. Expect that you have good places to keep everything and you have everything. Is there a way for them? Or is there a for I don't know that piece yet. So even when you put in this application, you're not sure how soon? I don't know exactly. We're, our, our hope is to roll it out July 1, but that's It might be August or okay. September, right? Yep. It's an unknown at this point. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Please roll. Okay, Barbara, yes. Brown? Yes. Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Patty? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. All right, item E. Do I hear a motion to approve the expenditure from the Special Reserve Fund not to exceed 18000 Purchase three Dell staff computer workstations for PR and marketing and one work. Patty? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Barb. Okay. Um, it seems a little more expensive for three computers than normal, so can you just... Yeah. So, um, it, yeah, these are graphics Sorry. computers. Sorry. And, uh, yeah, these are graphics computers, and they, they're, so they're much higher end systems as they need to be. And we're just down, so in case you have any specific questions about it. Sure. It's actually four. Uh, it should be uh, three for uh, publicity and marketing and one for IT. Oh, and one for oh, IT. One. It's yes. oh, sorry, no problem. So uh, they're still expensive. And uh, to give you uh, just some historical perspective, uh, not to prolong the meeting any longer, um, we tried to keep to a strategic plan of replacing a, a computer equipment every five years. Um, we were blessed to be able to do six and seven years for the majority of the staff fleets. Uh, this will round out uh, this. Uh, cycle of replacing uh, and desktops. They are more expensive. Um, basically, they uh, run multiple applications that are high uh, intensity for graphics. Um, the PR department does, they can speak towards that, um, but I'm happy to relate that. Um, and obviously, you see the great work that they do uh, because they're able to use the computer at the speed of them as opposed to slowing down. Um, and then the mistake, the sta one station is for me. Um, and I run multiple applications, um, multiple servers that I'm can promote it in all at the same time. Historically, uh, the last time we purchased these uh, four computers, uh, we paid 25000 uh, just over $25,000. <clears> so it's a net savings this time around of $7,600. Um, so it's the same type of platform, the workstation machines. So the base price is already above what a regular workstation would be. Um, but we were able to get better discounts this time around, um, and so we're happy to be able to, to do that. We're also not replacing the monitors at this time, like we did for the remainder of the fleet. Um, we're keeping the current monitors, and uh, we will be replacing those as they die. So, so that's an additional savings. Just, um, yeah, just to remember, outsourcing was a lot of extra money to do for the marketing. Do you think there was some outsourcing in the PS? Absolutely. And, it does yeah. uh, contribute to a higher cost. Initially, all of these machines are, uh, there's not a machine that's idle. So um, th there's always a staff member that's working on these four machines. So they're always being worked on. Um, so we don't, it's not like they're, we're purchasing for it to sit there. Um, we're purchasing it because there's a need for it and people are using it. To that degree. And everything, all the software that we have right now will be uploaded onto these new machines? Yes. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Um, I just wanted to know that we're buying this through a pre bid contract. Absolutely. It's, so it's already been bid by then. What is it's NASPO? Under, what is it? It's mm -hmm. under the $20,000 requirement uh, by the district law, uh, the Illinois District Act. Um, however, we always purchase through the pre bid. Uh, it's the North American um, 
it's called NAPSCO WISCO. Um, originally it was called Western States Contract Alliance, and it's the state procurement officers uh, for most of the western states, uh, west of Mississippi, that have gone into a co-op to do bidding. So one lead agency will do uh, a bid contract for usually five years uh, for a particular uh, type of service. This happens to be under the computer contract. Um, so New Mexico is the current lead agency of that. It's like from 2017 uh, onward for a five-year period. Uh, we purchased the original computers back like in 2003 off of the original WISCA um, and we continue to do that. It allows us to be able to look at the particular computers that will fit the bill for what the library needs um, and what the patrons need, what the staff need, depending on what machines we're buying, without having to go through the process of closed bid, try to figure out if we're going to get a manufacturer that will even bid for a small lot, um, and get what we actually are trying to accomplish. So, um, so it's a great uh, contract, and we're part of that. Okay, and it's free to us to use it. All right, it's just sort of reassuring because it is a lot of money. Absolutely, sure yes. And over the years, we've studied countless of like, tens of thousands of contracts. So, so where are these four computers going to be? The PR and marketing, okay. so the webmaster like that, and then Rich has one in his mm -hmm. office. So one is my whatever. downstairs in my office that I use it as my primary machine. Uh -huh. uh, Sasha, uh, Annette, uh, not no, Sasha, uh, Emily, Emily, Emily and, and Matthew. Matthew now, yes. They, yeah, the webmaster, the marketing assistant, and the marketing supervisor. Mm -hmm. okay. So our special reserve uh, line item right now, um, budgeted at 148000 for the year. We spent thirty-two, which is obviously wonderful. And this 18 will come uh, in addition to that. Do we have, um, what is our expectations of spending for the rest of the year, this Any ideas? Well, I can speak towards uh, approximately 55,000, something like that. Um, it was in there because uh, for purchase of hardware, uh -huh. uh, computer hardware, that uh, we applied for, or I applied for E-Rate money, and we were granted that money. Um, and um, for some of the heart, it goes directly from the manufacturer, so we don't even have to ask the board to pay for it and then wait for a check. It goes directly to the E-Rate uh, Universal Services Agency that will directly get billed and they'll pay uh, the end unit. So, um, so about 55 is not going to be spent uh, okay. because we were able to get a grant on it. Yes. And we're still looking at additional funds coming in. Ladder for the um, uh, elevator pit and some outside work that needs to be done, some concrete work and different things like that that have to be done as well. But I think that for the bathrooms in there this year. The bathrooms were in there. Yeah, so some of that will be set aside again for next year because it wasn't completed. Yeah. Okay. Diana, did you have anything else? Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Aaron? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve item F to approve changes to administrative and services policy 3.04 borrowers and borrowers cards? Motion. Okay. Second. Patty? I mean, Karen, was that you? Karen yes. and then oh, Karen and Patty. What is the change to the policy? Okay, so on page 66, it's got the changes in bold. And the basic thing is that a few years ago, they loosened up the requirements for getting a library card. Um, they were just taking basically uh, mail that had, you know, a person's address on it. And then, um, for a number of reasons, we were looking at the requirements that other libraries had set for what, you know, what ID they were requiring. And, um, and most other places were requiring a photo ID. There was a theft ring going around and getting uh, library cards with false ID. And none of those were actually gotten here, but we thought we do not want to be the, the weak link in this chain here. So that somebody could get a card here and then go check out a bunch of you know, games from some other library. So um, I would like to change that so that they once again are asking for photo ID. The second change I'd like to make is uh, to the parent part because Sometimes we would have parents 
who had racked up fines and lost things on their own cards, then applying for a child's card uh -huh. without clearing their own card. Uh -huh. uh, so what's wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> So, I would like to, if they have a library card for that card to be taken up. Did we send out any kind of notice to individuals when the cards are about to expire? We don't. I don't. I, you know, actually, I think we do now. For a while, we didn't, and then they changed it so that. See, so I, yeah. I found out in my mind by going to Park Ridge, and they said, you know, yours is expiring in the next week. I said, oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but they do now, but they didn't for a long time. Can they also highlight the effect? the information that you must now bring a photo ID in because yeah. otherwise yeah. people will come in and say, why are you going to do this? Yeah. So, yeah. Good idea. So photo ID would basically be their driver's license or, or state ID. Or passport. So passport. <laughs> <laughs> Smart guy. So this is the Are there more like you at home? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. Um, Diane Lucy Brown. Hey, uh, Karen? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Brian? Yes. Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. 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 Okay, so Susan notified us over the weekend that the presentation of the budget is delayed until next week at the special board meeting. Uh, Susan, do you know when we will receive the budget binder? Well, Greg and I have one day to overlap tomorrow, and hopefully, I've been working on my pieces. I know he was working on his pieces before he had to leave town. Hopefully, we will have it all together by tomorrow, and it can come out to you Friday, but it will be Monday at the latest. And then we will present it as we planned to before, line by line. There is still in the trustee calendar, you can see that there is a second presentation of the budget at the main meeting as well. Mm -hmm. And that's when the, the tentative ordinance will actually be voted on. Not at the special meeting, but at the, the main meeting. We would not want you to have to vote on it with one, one view. I was going to say, next, so next meeting is technically the meeting that the residents come to and, and listen to too. Well, not, this next meeting is just a special board meeting for the board to be able to go through it and review it line by line, but, per, but it's an open meeting. Anybody who would like to come yeah. to it certainly can. Uh, then we will be posting a public hearing notice. Okay, yes, the public yes, hearing yes. goes before the main meeting where you vote on the okay. tentative okay. ordinance. Okay. It's before the main meeting. Is it the main meeting? I thought it was after. It's, it's, no, I think June 21st. I, I think you're right. Like, no, I think it's, well, you know, legally, our legal deadline is August. So it's really somewhere. How is there a legal deadline if July 1st is our budget year? That's, that's the legal deadline. We will yeah, budget, a budget uh, the approved of, of yeah. appropriation yes. for this is on the 1st of June. That's right. So we announce it after the voting of the tentative ordinance at the May meeting for the June meeting. So the, the one where the public can come and wait in is, is on June 21st, okay. immediately before the other board meeting. Okay. Can I just ask another question? So at the May board meeting, then our new board members will be participating in the second and, and they'll be able to go through the budget at, at the second round, just like yes. they did the first time. Yes, so like they're going to be exposed to all that information. Yeah, and they're invited well. to come to the meeting next week as well. Right. I certainly have notified them, and I know Dennis is planning on coming. I believe Diane said she was as well. They, they have but they no won't input. They, they can't know, vote for asking yeah. questions, you know what I mean? So, but they'll be able to do it at their first meeting yes. in May. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Be, yeah. It will be sworn in trustees. All right. Um, we can have item H. All right. Do I hear a motion to approve the solicitation of bids for new buildings and ground signage identifying the library? So moved. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Okay, so can please walk us through the plan. Okay, um, so this is uh, for product architecture to um, get companies to bid on our signage project. It is over $20,000, so it has to be bid. Um, and so if you will turn to page 74, of your packet. The one we got, the one we got, uh, yes, people have it there. Page 74, I just wanted to walk you through the particular signs that we are talking about doing. Sign number one, um, it, it, so just to recap briefly for anybody that doesn't know, um, 
at the moment, the library's only exterior signage is the sign on the corner of Oakton and Waukegan. There's no other exterior signage in here that says the library's name. Any sign. There's nothing. Literally nothing. Not anything. Yeah. No, nothing on the building. No. No, that's why. Well, that's why we said people. Yeah. <laughs> people <laughs> are like, the where's the library? Because yeah. we have a library. <laughs> yes. And that's why this has been on my goals for the last year is to work on this project. So, um, so now we finally have a package of signage that they are recommending. And one of the issues that the library faces is that if you are coming from particular directions, you have passed the sign before you knew that you were had to turn. There are really a very limited numbers of ways you can get into the library driveways. Mm -hmm. So this first sign, number one in the corner here, is a sign at the corner of, of Oakton Court and Waukegan. Mm -hmm. It is set back from where the original sign was, where the village had said we could not put a sign there because of visibility. It's set back a little bit uh, on Waukegan. And it, um, it's lit up and it says library. So it'll be it'll shine at night. That is the first one. The second one, and it's double-sided, so you can see it from both directions. So that is to get people to turn off onto Oakton Court before they have gone past the point where they cannot turn anymore. Here on the picture, it doesn't show the arrows, but it... You it does have arrows, yeah. I was looking for the white little spaces and arrow. Oh, right, right here. This is, what it's oh. Gonna, this is what it's going to look like. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, there will be little sign signs. So, uh, can I ask you a question too? Yeah. Um, so, are these signs self-lit, or are they lit from? Uh, they're, they're lit from. This sign is lit from within. Some within. of them have exterior lighting, but this one is lit from right. within. And and uh, how are we running the electricity to these signs? We wouldn't have to run electricity to the signs. <laughs> the to the solar. So. Uh, I don't know. That is a question I could ask. Um, so this all encompasses. You're going to have to tear up. Parking lot. So actually, we could, they could maybe able to tap into the, the light fixtures that are currently outside. Uh, all of our poles, they may be able to trench to one of those areas and trench back. So it won't be a whole. Uh, would they be able to possibly even trench to the side on the corner? Because wasn't that the where they went? Yeah, they have to use it's a long ways off from there, but it's not that well, I'm just well, saying, because if they, go to to, to, if they go to the sites, I mean to the lights, don't they still have to trench up some of the parking lot? No, no it's right here. We have them on the walls. Right here. There's How? lights on the walls. How do they meet us then if we're going off that uh, light point? It comes, it comes out of our regular uh, service. The service is already there from us, from our box downstairs. It's only lit at nighttime. That's when the, the sign will be lit at nighttime. Parking lot. It's our parking lot light. Not the public light. Oh. Right. It's oh, our parking lot. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, 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 it's our pole light that's on our right. I get you. Tell you how much the village is electric. Yeah. Okay, so that's sign number one. People are always walking their dogs down the library's lawn, and you can see the picture has captured a guy in the air. Send him a fine. <laughs> Page 75, the next sign is for the driveway on Oakton. Um, and Linda and I were talking before this, and uh, she made the good point that you don't necessarily want to have the enter here arrows on this side sign because from the other direction you can't actually enter that way. So we may ask them just to take that off and just be the sign saying library, flagging the driveway so that you haven't gone shooting past the driveway. So that's another freestanding sign. So I'm, I'm sorry, I, mm -hmm. and I don't mean to ask questions that maybe you can be asking us. But we currently on this on this um, page of your page no. seventy eight. No, seventy eight. I'm not oh, yeah. seventy five. I'm seventy five. Out of order. Out of order. <laughs> so I'm on page seventy five now. <laughs> Are people going to be tempted to turn left in there? Well, well they can't because there's a median. There's a median. So it's sort of like teasing yeah, them, know. saying, no. turn here. No, no, yeah. So that's why maybe without the arrows at all, it's just saying yeah. library. Yeah. So at least they'll see those. Just from the other side of hand. Yeah. So there's arrows on one side. This can't go to one side, go on the arrow. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I have a little answer. Like, would that be a center here? That, 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 that,
So page 76, um, he has the top picture is the picture of the sort of fence that runs across the top of one of the roofs. And then the picture below it is of the Niles Main District Library letters on that fence. This is one of the, the places with the most impact, I think. There's mm -hmm. literally nothing on the front of the building that says who we are. So yeah. they don't have spots on it then for night or what? That's a good question. I don't know the answer. There's electric pressure off. There are aluminum letters as well. Yeah. The next page, 77, shows that same type of lettering but on the back of the building, on Oakland Court, this side. So if you're coming in the back driveway, you'll still know where you're going. And then the second picture of that is obviously the old building where there used to be letters. There actually are still the hooks there where letters used really? to be, which is so funny. Yeah. Um, so that's where those are being coming from the east you would spot that. And from across the street you would spot that. If you're coming down the Civic Center Drive, that's where you're going to be. From Home Depot. Yeah. And for Village Hall, which are the city people. And then the last thing is on page 78. Oh, it's not last thing. I like But the next thing is on 78. And that is to um, update the sign, the existing sign at the corner. Uh, it's to replace the three vi uh, video signs, LED signs. Um, it's the single most expensive thing in the project. So if you look for a thing to, to toss, that would be that would be a place where you could save some money. But I think um, they are at the point where they keep having to replace components of it, and that's not cheap, right? Um, they I, are, I, there's multiple panels on each one of those three. I'm not sure exactly how many, but maybe 10 or more. And actually, each panel to replace is like $500. Like one square. There's so let me say there's thirty six total. Okay. No, no, per screen. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're only this big. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah. and then you have so, to pay for the service for them to come out on top of each. Wait, there's five hundred dollars each panel, each one. Mm -hmm. Those little circles. But you got to remember how much, what you see, what. Right, how many pixels? Yeah. So, so are we upgrading it to something better? It or? would be better. Yeah, it'd be more modern, definitely. And well, then also redoing the lettering on it, obviously. Does it have a warranty with it? Um, yeah. Sure. The sign, the sign that's out the curb? No, 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 are they, do they look tiny to you or is it the door? Yes. I guess it's to squeeze them into that space. Really? Okay. I mean, they're, you know, not a little bit longer, you know, like taller. They look so They're 12 inches high. It isn't, it isn't that small. small. It's just this picture. It oh, is it? Over. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just a mock up. So because I'm it's thinking it's as I'm sitting it's there at the red light, am I going to see that? It is a little bit too much. All right, thanks. Yeah. So oh, yeah, that is bigger. Yeah, they look really small. I think it's with the white background. I mean, it should be okay. It should be hopping. Yeah, good point. Okay, page so I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, page seventy-eight. That, that LED sign. I have heard comments from from people uh, about the LED sign in general that that it's difficult to read anything as you're driving by, should we have a discussion of whether or not we should even have it? Uh, I know it's uh, very uh, hip and now to have an LED sign like that, but um, now that we're redoing this, uh, should we have that discussion? I, I don't know if anybody else feels it's not effective. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just, that's what I've heard from a number of people. Yeah. I don't know, I guess I sit at that light enough that I always <laughs> get to see through. I mean, I, you know, and, and so, you know, you know yeah. the amount of time that you have to spend to actually get any useful information, you have, you have to be at that light for that amount of time. And if oh, you're just I driving by, you can't saying. really read what oh, it's, yes. it's, it's too bad. And I'm just bringing this up as a general discussion. <laughs> Maybe it will cost more to take it out. I don't know. I, I, well, I, I, I and then at a later date, if we decide to put it in by itself, it'll cost more because we're doing a single thing. Well, I probably, I, I actually, we might not be able to get it at all. It's 
probably grandfathered in at this point. They're pretty strict about their signage ordinance these yeah. days. I was going to ask about the signage ordinance yeah. because the ordinance of sign went in was it two or three years ago? I can't remember. A couple years ago. And um, I was just wondering how, you know, would that sign comply with the new? Uh, Dan has use? talked over this over with the people with the village already, so theoretically speaking, yes. The old one? No, the new. The, just the yeah. new one. Okay. This whole plan has been reviewed with the village. I don't know if they have officially signed off on it, but he has worked through a number of issues with the village on this already, and that this was not one of them. But yeah, I don't think that we could take it out and put it back again. That I think is not an option. Yeah, and I, I don't know what to, to say to him. I mean, I, to me, it seems. Like it's pretty eye-catching and it makes you kind of look at it. I, I, I don't know how you feel about it, Sasha. I mean, we've had an electronic sign even before my time in the department, so definitely over eight years. It used to, the three sides used to be there, but it was like, you know, we put the letters up. Yeah, right. And Vince was responsible for that once upon a time. Um, I can tell you that um, I have heard a lot of feedback over my time here that people are seeing um, the information on the sign. Um, we try to schedule each slide, if you will, on a three second basis. So we could catch people at least to see a couple slides while they're on the fly. Um, I can definitely tell you that people are telling us that a few light bulbs are out, so I know that they're looking at it <laughs> okay. while they're driving. Sure. Um, so um, we know that it's been a pretty effective way of us to communicate and promote our programs. Okay. Just bring it up in case anybody else wanted to identify. And, and just, just, one, just to add one more thing, I thought when I was looking at the sign, it's just not a couple words, it's really one whole thought process. So I know when I'm sitting there looking at it, I know something, you know, yeah. the whole yeah. thing. Like at some other signs, you get a few words and right. I get a right. few more words. But I think I'm seeing this event or, mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. So it's a complete thought at least. And, um, and I get try to see it, yeah. So yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. an eye catcher too because it, it this might have uh, fireworks. Yes, and then exactly. you know, or the way that the words yeah. come out, you know, I mean, I think that really does attract the eye. Sure. And I'm then with the new sign, you'd be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say that I have noticed I it's know. hard to see it when you're coming from the east on Oakton because of trees when they're leafed out. So, but then if we get those other lower signs, they can still see the library. Yes. So yeah. that's the purpose because they were complaining just with the one sign, they were driving right past the library. Yes, lots. Well, so the graphics, though, are said to be better than what we have, right? Yes. Like by so far. Yeah. Okay. And how long do we have these, the original one? How long? Mm -hmm. Eight years. 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 Um, so this is going up to this, and Vince won't come back until the end of the day. So we will do this for the end of the day. At this yeah. point, we can accept some of the bid, and accept part of the bid, accept the whole entire bid, reject yes. the whole bid. Really yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, my thought in bringing it to you at this time, I could have just sent it out for the bid without getting your permission, but I didn't really want to ask companies to be going through this whole process with costs of money and then bring it to you guys and have you say, we're not doing that. That's ridiculous. So, so the bids will come in in components, for instance, we can do one part of the It is module. Okay. Okay. Yes, although the installation is usually is the whole package. So that that part would change. I have to admit I can't believe how much we lack science it's this now that you're putting it on the library building. Wow. Yeah. And the banners are awesome. Yeah, so that, the banners are just powerful. powerful. Page seventy nine is where you see banners. Yes. They're banners both out in the parking lot on the part of the lights and then on the building itself, sort of like the field museum is mm -hmm. supposed to be the effect of that. Yeah, that will just really bring our color scheme together yeah. and it will yeah. now then mirror our marketing. I mean, I think it's really good. I know when, when I looked at this, uh, the page, I was like, oh, it's the show. Yeah. And it gives you the ability to market particular things. Yeah. Promote particular things. Like you have a big event, like uh, you know, the baseball exhibit. Yeah. 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 Y
So you're able to change the letters on the banners? Or no, no, you just put up a new banner. Oh, okay. yeah. so yeah. like the banners themselves are not expensive. If you have a baseball oh, the or something, okay. you just put up a different banner. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But this would be better in hardware than we experimented with banners before, and they looked fantastic, but the hardware did not hold up in the wind. So this is um, more for that quality. Yeah. yeah. Then you get yeah. It's a learning experience. So that is. So I'm kind of walking you through it. It, do, it does add up to a fair amount of money. It's one hundred twenty thousand dollars if you get all of the components. But as you say, it is modular. You could well, conceivably pull pieces out. Mm -hmm. That's the that's what we have to do. That is yeah, ASI. We don't know what the real is. Well, ASI did most of the signage in the interior of the building, so I think Dan considers them to be a front runner for this. But I have no idea how many other signage companies there are in the world, and maybe there will be a big bear. Yeah. So, we're really not deciding on any. No, no, no. 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 Just to send the bids out, which yes. is yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. And is this a, like an RFP process? Is this on the yeah. website? That's it will be. It's going to be. Uh, it will, and I don't know what else Dan is going to do. It's probably spelled out in the documents. But no, I'm just wondering how large of an area you'll be able to reach requesting this so you can yeah. get some variation. Yeah, hopefully. Well, product architecture covers the whole Chicago land area, so they should, they should have some connections okay. all over the place. All right. Um, so uh, and I'm sorry, no, I thought maybe somebody asked a question. So in the coming budget process, then we'll have to have uh, consideration for this. Yeah, we would be putting this in the, I think it's the special reserve is where it is currently. Uh, Rob? Yes. Rob? Yes. Kim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Yes. Annie? Yes. Rudna? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Okay, there's no unfinished. Oh, actually, there is something I didn't Oh, okay. um, I, I just want to say I'm glad to see members of the press here tonight. I know they're not here necessarily all meetings. Not all of our meetings are this interesting. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just want to uh, say that over the past year it's become increasingly clear that we as voters need accurate information. We rely on you and the press to get that information out so that we can make informed choices based on, on you know, facts and the statements. And it's you know, true nationally, but it's also true locally, too. We had uh, a number of misstatements of facts circulated during uh, the weeks running up to the election, a board member sent out a letter to over 100 families of St. John Brevoff uh, making a number of misstatements of facts as to what the board had done. It specifically stated that we had already voted to purchase new signage without a spending cap. The letter said that we had already voted to provide passport services without any idea of the cost of taxpayers. Uh, that we had already, that we had voted to join IMRF, quote, which is underfunded by three million, but then inconsistently say that IMRF is 100 percent, is 800 percent over budget. Uh, which this, is true. This statement wasn't explained the inconsistency, but this supposed fact was a result of quote total incompetency of the library trustees. Uh, in addition, the other trustees were labeled as being in the letter quote incompetent, lazy, ignorant, quote lacking in experience, knowledge, fiduciary responsibility, and accountability. Um, this letter might be dismissed as sort of a curious catalog of misrepresentations, but it might have had the intended effect of swaying the election. And that's why I think it's so important that the public read the newspapers and get the intended facts. But I can say that Mr. Uh, the favorite candidate, I hope, will rise above the tactics used by this other board member and will become a board member who examines the facts, votes carefully, does not spread misrepresentations. And I think we need to welcome that board member and work with him if he's willing to work with us. Uh, he's not been a board member before, and we should not prejudge him on various positions. Uh, he's entitled to his opinion and to our respectful attention, and I hope he and the other new board member will provide the same respect to the rest of us. And I would like to respond to say that the error in my comments was definitely the six to one, six to one. So I should have not put that in there, but I was rushed to get it out. But the fact of the matter is, you did vote for an $800,000 levy increase when Greg told you, if you continue your spending, you will run out of money. And I asked Greg, 
Why didn't we consider options to cut spending? Everything here is to increase spending. And he said, well, if the board members would like me to provide that information, I will. So one, you voted for an increase you didn't need. And yes, we were jumping on this passport idea, and I asked for three months for information, and we didn't get it. So I am glad to go to the paper tonight and say, yes, the library finally provided us with detailed information about what's expected. But everything else in there is factual. Um, 18%. Really? No. Tell me what's, really? tell me, let's do it line by line, and I'll be more than glad to help you out. <laughs> well, Dennis Martin is the only qualified library trustee. Okay, Dennis Martin is the only candidate who brings to this position information that all of you are not familiar with. Nobody wants to handle staffing. Nobody wants to talk about programming. So Rob's not Nobody, qualified. Rob's, yeah, another, Rob's a teacher who is bringing the same element you know we already have. Do you know qualifications for a library trustee are? I know very well what they are, but and I can Rob see around this board. Rob we, doesn't meet the qualifications. I'm saying he's we, not qualified. I'm saying we need additional qualifications so that we don't have. Done with you. But you can to be call done me with incompetent in print to all these people is unconscionable, and in I'm term, sorry. Well, I'm, and I have to say, I'm very glad to see that tonight you decided to take on the responsibility of treasurer because that's amazing to me, and I think it's a good step in the right direction because for Greg Pritz. Greg Pritz to read for Greg Pritz to read a one-page report instead of us reviewing our budget. Well, why don't like you say something should. to me rather than writing this sort of drip? Well, no, no. But my point there, the incompetency is that you all vote. You don't want to hear facts. You don't want to delve into any details. When I asked for information about staffing, you all threw a fit. Do you realize right now? Our HR costs are over $5 million. Our total budget is $7 million. We need to start looking at the details. What does that to have to do with the things that you say that are reprehensible? To be Absolutely. honestly, if you refuse to look at facts and vote on, on facts and say we're and all you know of what? the same opinion, If you're this that's upset my with this board, hmm. if you are this upset with this board and you think the rest of us are incompetent, I wish that you would consider resigning and allowing somebody else to take your position. I would Google. love to consider walking away, but there are too many taxpayers who feel I'm the only person who brings the facts out. We don't put them in the minutes. We, we don't put anything in the minutes. We don't, we, I mean, it's a big deal. Just invite the public to come here. It's How not a big deal. They're open to every single stinking meeting. What, it's what not the, the is point. The at, the last, at the last board meeting, we talked about inviting the public to come to our, our budget meeting. Karen Diamond's comment was, oh, I don't see why. The public is also invited. I you know, did. Look at the video. And then your response was, yeah, we only need 10 minutes. Look at the video. You guys, don't you look at the videos to see what you say? No one's always invited. I'm saying we don't go out of our way to invite them. Sure, if they want to go on our website. Are we supposed to send them a great invitation? When you spend $7 million of their money and you don't respect their opinions, how many times do they come here pleading with you and you actually make jokes about them? No, I said for us to give her our responsibility, we must be lazy or ignorant and, and well, violating and who state statutes. Every uh, many other libraries do exactly the same thing. Not we many. had a we had a uh, a lawyer right here who interprets our, our our legislation. So you're you're the god of uh, legislation that knows what the all. The I know our attorney. Yes. Is that oh, we're not as competent as you. In all the subject matters, I'm so he tired of you. Have no me. idea. And the next go around, I'm not sitting with you because don't. It has to do with. So, I like please that. come here, so, and I will love. I'd like love. to come here and grandstand. Yeah, all I can say is. I don't know, I give you facts every time. Excuse me. All I can do is. Do you hardly know where we are at any given time? All I can say as the president is. Anything that is ever put out for the library should be extremely factual, taken from the board meeting, period. And I if believe you it, are a right. member of the board, you should stand by the board. Whatever the decision is, you have to stand behind it, as we all did when there was never anything in public comment in the newspapers or 
ever said outside of this meeting, if anybody disagreed on anything, no one ever slandered each other. Okay, well, I'll tell you, it's my mistake ever. for the errors, but I will admit, when you many sit errors, here, many errors, and that one as far as the, the six to one, but no, you voted on 800000 we didn't even need the money. People we did need the money. It was going into the red. Because you, you refused to review your yeah, budget. That's, one, that's your opinion. However, okay. ask any however, other accountant. But it's it's okay because that's okay and that was your opinion. But you have to stand it. by the board's decision. It's not one vote. It's a board's vote. And that's what we have to stand by as a board. Okay, I cannot so stand I by the board's right now. vote. I would like to need a motion to go into executive session to discuss the minutes of a closed session meetings. May I have a motion? Motion. I'll second it. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Kevin. You are. All right, Diane, please take the roll. Uh, yeah, please. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. yes. Barbara? Yes. Bob? Yes. 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 The regular session now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I need a motion to approve the executive session minutes and release. I'm sorry, to release the executive session minutes of the Board of Trustees for January 18, 2017, August 17, 2016. May 18, 2016, and January 20, 2016. So this is to approve and release. Well, they're going to approve, approve it. just to release. Okay. So, so moved. I'll second. Okay, Karen Barbara. Any discussion? Karen and Oh, yeah. Yeah, we should let you move. Diane, please take over. Okay. And this is first motion. Okay, uh, Karen? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Rob? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Gary? Yes. yes. And Linda? Yes. Okay. okay um, is there any other? And then, uh, is there a I just want to thank both of you from the bottom of our heart. Thank you. We'll come and visit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Godspeed. Mm -hmm. uh, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn. So, we'll so wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go, go, go ahead. ahead. Let them do it. So moved. God, I'll second. We wouldn't know they could never leave. Diane, please take the vote. Hey, Rob? Yes. Tim? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Candy? Yes. Linda? Yes. Karen? Yes. And one kind of yes. Thank you.